I remember coming to, and I remember my mom being there next to my bed, and she would sing hymns to me from the hymnal. And that's when I knew that it wasn't fake. A nightmare, but fake. real. After six weeks on a ventilator, that's how Julie Collier woke up. I remember bits and pieces for about a week, and then I don't remember anything until March the 14th. February 3rd, 2021, doctors admitted Collier to the St. Dominic ICU. She knew she had COVID-19, but now she could barely breathe. She remembers waiting 11 hours on the floor of the swamped emergency room. I was all alone, so it was very scary. All alone, very scary, and finally I grabbed somebody and I said, I cannot breathe and you have to give me some oxygen <laughs> or something because I was, I was scared to death. Scared for herself and for her son. Collier is a single mom and her son Wyatt was just 14. Everybody else I know that got COVID just got over it. But then, like, the day that she went in the hospital, I was like, this is bad. And it got worse. Within days, Collier was on life support. My oxygen went down so low that the only way that I was gonna survive was to be put on a drip and sedated and then vent put on the ventilator. So I would not move while they gave me oxygen and helped me breathe. Collier says doctors tried to take her off the ventilator after three weeks, but she crashed. It was one point when I was at on St. Dominic when they called my parents and said, you need to come see your daughter and they brought my son up to, and I don't remember seeing him or my parents. Like, um, I don't remember that part. But they said, you know, I, we don't think she's gonna make it. I had a lot of people praying for me to get me to that point, and that's the only reason that I think I'm still, still here. But then Collier had to overcome the devastating toll the virus had taken on her body. I thought the, the linens on the bed weighed a lot, but that was me not being able to move the linens, just like a regular sheet. Collier was used to standing all day teaching. Now she couldn't stand at all, much less walk. She couldn't feel her left arm. Physical therapy began slowly. The first thing I ever did was sit up because I hadn't sat up in the bed since February. Like, and so that was, very hard, I got very dizzy. Collier spent 18 hours a week in therapy. Standing was a huge milestone. Her therapist at Methodist Rehab helped her retrain her body and build up the strength to reach her goal, getting back home to her son and back to the classroom. In late May, Collier came home. And I had three friends who completely took over my whole life. They took care of my house, they took care of my dog, they took care of every single thing. They filled out all my paperwork for like family medical leave and then I had a good friend who also took care of my son and let him live with her. And I mean, these are things you can't pay back. She's back in the classroom now. All of them are facing up, they can be tilted. But still dealing with nerve damage in her arm and her feet. And her voice is still gravelly from the trach that helped keep her alive. I think I'm probably about, you know, 80, 80% 80 of my, how I was before. Northwest paid somebody to design their font. Even as her recovery continues, Collier says she knows she'll never be quite the same. My faith is stronger now. It's so much deeper. I see God in every single part of what everything that happened. Every step has led to this and now it's I'm here. And I'm beyond thankful to be here.